a little bit touch on the fiscal cliff and then we will move right past it. Uh, we didn't go off it exactly. Uh, still more deal making to come in, in a few months on the debt ceiling and on those spending cuts that they, they pushed off in terms of the sequestration that was supposed to go through. We do have some tax hikes. We do have some permanent Bush tax cuts. I don't know. What's your takeaway on this deal? Yeah, so I mean... It what the lawmakers, what the deal did manage to do is help lawmakers avert headlines today of markets plunge hundreds of points on lack of fiscal cliff deal. But as you said, the actual meat is, is really nothing to write home about. So let's talk about something more interesting. Anytime these kind of discussions come about about the fiscal cliff or, or whatever it may be when we're talking about prescriptions for the economy, we hear plenty of ideas about what it takes to stimulate the economy or help the economy improve, whether it's that the government needs to spend to make up for what the consumer isn't spending or whether it's the government. No, it needs to cut spending to shore up the budget and, and get rid of some of these deficits or the magnitude of them or that you need tax cuts uh, to, to stimulate the economy. Now, all of these are driven by economic theory, by economists and their models. But you argue that there's kind of a core problem, which is that you can't really separate policy prescriptions from ideology of whoever that economist is or that school of thought is that's giving the policy prescription. So how so? Like, explain this, and also, you know, where does reality fit in? Right. So we're always focused on how the government, the Treasury in particular, can spend more money or implement some sort of counter-cyclical policy to help the economy. And what they both do, which I think is flawed, is that... Rather than what we hear with so many schools of thought, which are both descriptive, but also prescriptive, which you're saying you can't really then separate the ideology from that. So then... Tell us your reality. What are people missing about the monetary system and their version of reality that doesn't necessarily gel with what's going on? Yeah, so I mean, well, the Fed comes in and, and is, I don't know what you would compare the Fed to, the doctor that then supports the circulatory system, gets the blood pumping, or so we're led to believe. So you were... I, I couldn't hear what you said, but, I, but I'm sure it was very, very, very funny. I'll let you fully respond, because what then is the role of something like... Fed, Federal Reserve stimulus or QE, what does that actually do? Because the idea is that that gets the money to the banking system, which in theory should then lend the money out and get it to, to Main Street for businesses or individuals or, or whatnot. But, but what do you think then really is going on with QE? But I want to talk more about the ways in which the monetary system is misunderstood and has perhaps lent itself to wrong predictions that we've seen in the past year or so. So more with Colin Rose. Well, I, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were... Seconds before we go, I just really quickly want to ask you if we should be concerned about Ben Bernanke and his uh, f colleagues at the Fed's wrong predictions. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, the... the be that you are here to explain uh, what people should know looking forward. I appreciate it. Colin Roche, founder... All right, it's time for a reality check. I think it's fair to say more political theater lies ahead when it comes to the fiscal cliff deal. But let's just quickly touch on it, okay? When it comes to the tax hikes that were passed by Congress as part of this deal, those are set to raise $600 billion in new revenue over the next 10 years. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. But just to put it into perspective, what does $600 billion over 10 years actually buy? because it's important to know that, right? So let's put it in a little perspective. One year's additional revenue from this $600 billion, so that's $60 billion, could cover the U.S.'s current expenses for how long? Oh, at $10.5 billion, that is less than six days. That is 5.7 days, according to Tim Phillips of townhall.com, who crunched the numbers. Or the additional revenue, if you started saving it for about five years, so halfway through that 10-year projection, you could pay for the F-35 fighter plane program, which will clock in at $331 billion, according to Forbes, citing the Defense Department, in 2012 dollars. So halfway through, you can get to that number of one plane program. Warning, we have not adjusted these numbers for inflation based on any expectations of inflation, but hey, these are estimates to begin with, so let's just keep having some fun. So at the end of 10 years, if you saved all of that money, the $600 billion in additional revenue, you're really good, you saved it, you didn't spend it, you could pay for one year 
of defense spending after all that saving one year, at least as far as we can tell from projections that in 2022, defense spending will be $618 billion. That's under Obama's budget estimated by the CBO and the Office of Budget Management. And after 10 years saving all that dough, it will almost pay for the federal spending on the net interest on America's debt, which is estimated to be $743 billion in 2022. Again, this is according to CBO and OMB based on Obama's budget. Finally, the $600 billion, if you save that all, could pay less than one-sixth of the $4 trillion deficits the CBO says this deal is also likely to create because it makes most Bush tax cuts permanent. So much for curbing our national debt. Just a quick reality check for you. All right, let's wrap up with loose change. Dimitri. Hi, Lauren. Lest we get so fatigued from cliffs, let's talk about one more because there was another cliff that lawmakers worried about this week, the dairy cliff. Why is the government involved in subsidizing the price of milk? Milk is not even good for you. We are the only mammals that drink our own milk. This is not a good thing to be involved in, not that the government should be involved in the prices of anything. You mean we're the only mammals that drink other mammals' milk? Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we drink our own milk. It's ridiculous. Uh, babies. Uh, I, uh, we rail against subsidies here all the time. The subsidies in the farm bubble because the reality is that these subsidies for milk digest milk are lactose intolerant. Yeah, okay? we are not built to, to so there's, digest there, milk. So we're subsidizing human farts. Plus... <laughs> Plus, cows apparently fart like crazy. Uh -huh. Okay, I've seen her warming. Rising global warming. We I'll tell are, you one thing. Sandy is the, the, these cows. You know the the proverbial butterfly in Asia. Yes. It's like the cow in Iowa yeah. or wherever these cows are being, like California. California, happy cows. You're from right. Farting cows though, not ha happy. Farting well, cows. I'll tell you when you're talking about the methane bubble. That is one bubble you would really not want to be on the wrong side of when it pops. Oh, especially if there's a guy with a lighter standing. So milk is saved, but these are not. Uh, the copper. Uh, calculation was based on the fact that now it can be speculative with like the JP Morgan ETF. I don't know if we're particularly worried about any of these particular I'm worried about the one that you're I'm crisis. worried about the one that you're about to tell us about Lauren. I want to talk about that one. I want to talk about the one that was saved. We are secret did. that was saved. Milk. Right. No, I'm sorry. What's the next? <laughs> oh, man. I didn't what, did you memorize lines? No, man, I didn't memorize any lines. Oh, it's just, I just I'm, I'm still in a different gear. You're still it on It takes vacation. a long time to get from second or first up to fifth gear. We had so many praises that we heard over and over again. <laughs> oh, God. What are we going <laughs> So we need it. We don't need it. Blah, blah, blah. Austerity. Oh, gosh. Austerity is austerity protests. Blah, blah, blah. And paying their fair share. What does that even mean? And this one is a wild area. No, it's become a phrase. disgusting word that makes me want to vomit all over myself. Why? Because you got guys that go on TV all the time like, we have to adjust this policy. Word is disgusting. I'm sick oh, of policy. Yeah. Policy. Uh, Get some markets in here. Yeah. We don't have prices. I okay. have a price. Out of time. I gotta go. I gotta prices. say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to come back tomorrow. Until then, have a great night.